everyone. Well, back pain is the topic of our discussion today. All of us have been working from home and I'll tell you, I'm getting back pain every single day. So how can Ayurveda help is the topic, which we are gonna discuss with Dr. Sandeep Bickel. Dr. Sandeep is a senior consultant and professor at Sharda Ayurvedic Medical College and Hospital in Mangalore, India. I'm Amita from Narishta, a global platform for natural and holistic therapies. I'd like to introduce all of you to Dr. Sandeep, who's joining us live from India right now. Welcome, Dr. Sandeep. Dr. Sandeep. Namaste, ma'am. All right. Namaste. So, okay, so let's get started uh, with, with your talk on, uh, you know, overall, what exactly, what causes aches and pains, and then we can go into the Ayurveda after that. Definitely, ma'am. We'll start right away. Okay, welcoming all the audience from all over the globe. Well, uh, I'm very sure that many of you would be very interested in knowing what is hidden in this traditional sciences because often you have seen what mod modern medicine can offer you, but it's rarely that you get a chance to listen to what traditional medicines can offer you. I'm very sure that uh, Many of you would always think about the various options they would be necessarily very helpful in overcoming many a problems. And one among them definitely is this back pain. As we know that uh, this aches and pains are one of the most commonest of the problems and most disturbing problems as well. And pain is something which actually needs attention at the earliest. If I'm not wrong, most of the attendance to any general practitioner would be for the sake of pain. Considering the fact that these people who suffer from pain get their lives affected in more than one way, definitely they would look for a sustainable solution. Many a times pain is a sole alarming symptom for a grave underlying pathology. Because though we accuse this pain of being one of the most devastating symptoms, but it is also a helpful symptom in many a cases wherein it gives you an alarm about the upcoming health issues, which may be really very dangerous. Okay, what is backache? Today we are just confining ourselves only to backache. Well, what is backache is to be understood in very basic terms. In simple words, any prolonged pain in the back is called as backache. See, I'll repeat that any simple pain, but very prolonged one, which is there in the back would be called as backache. The term back pain is more often used to indicate pain in lumbar region, as well as or the lower back, usually called the strain of the muscle or ligament. Backaches can be of varied nature as well as intensity. Many suffer from gripping pain and which may be mostly short-lived and does not interfere with the routine work. Well, this is something uh, you have to look for, this incidence. This incidence is relatively very high and one of the estimations put it at 60 to 80%. That means to say that across at least 60 to 80% would suffer from backache at some point or the other in their life. And Anderson estimated that annual worldwide low back pain incidence in adults to be 15% and the point prevalence to be 30%. Another study stated that at least 50% of adults would have experienced a low back pain episode. So it all goes to say that the low back pain is one of the commonest problems that you come across and the most nagging problem as well. Possibly it is also a problem which will make you confined to bed. And in many a cases wherein if the alarming symptoms are ignored, it can confine you totally to the bed. Therefore, though it is a problem which is very common and many a times self-limiting, 
but it can also be an alarming sign for a bigger problem. Let's just look into some of the causes, the common causes that we come across for backache. Trauma definitely is one of the most important causes. As you know, the road traffic accidents, possibly due to Corona, the vehicle uh, movement is relatively less now. But earlier, uh, you would come across, at least in India, we come across a lot of road traffic accidents and these would lead to a lot of damage to the spine. And as a result, backache and even other types of problems would be seen. Faulty posture in day-to-day -day activities as well as while sleeping can lead to backache. See, this is one again, a very common problem that you would come across because you've seen that uh, today, Amita was talking about that uh, they have this work from home option, but still they will have to confine themselves to a single chair for hours together. And faulty postures can definitely lead to severe back pain. Excess physical strain like pushing, pulling, lifting can also be one of the problems. Many a times we come across patients who come and uh, approach us telling that they were just trying to lift a particular object, a heavy object relatively, and uh, suddenly they had a kind of pain that they developed in the lower back and that persisted. And waking late in the night, see this is again something which may not be very commonly be represented in the modern text, but uh, Ayurveda very strongly puts forth this particular cause and I do find this in many of my patients. Waking uh, late in the night is definitely going to have an adverse effect on the strength of your muscle and it can cause muscular spasms and therefore that individual becomes more susceptible to backache. So when you said waking late in the night, meaning uh, staying awake till 2 a.m., is that what you say? Or, wake, or, or waking up like 2 a.m., but you slept at 10, uh, 10 p.m.? Well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I must tell in Indian standard timings, uh, see, uh, according to the text, I just give you uh, some of the ideas about how uh, uh, night life should be. Ideally, it should end by 10 o'clock. And your meal should be ideally at 8 p.m. at night. And uh, at least there should be a gap of two hours between meal and your night meal uh, or dinner, if you call it, uh, and your sleep. And once you sleep, ideally it should be a sound sleep, possibly if you can get that. And there are methods to do all those things. But I'm just telling you what it ideally should be. And then getting up what we call as Brahma Murta. Brahma Murta means uh, ideally 4.30 to 6 o'clock. And this time would be a very ideal time to get up in the morning. And uh, as you know that every human being needs at least six to seven hours of sleep. And it may be slightly more in some of them and slightly lesser may be sufficient for the others. And there are ways to compensate for it. That is a different issue altogether. And uh, one more thing, let me just, uh, since we have just wake up this issue. See, we, if at all you have to wake in the night for any reason, then it has to be compensated for the next day by sleeping half the number of hours, but on empty stomach. This is what the text tells very precisely. And this is what I just described to my patients as well. Because even in those days, they had people who were working night shift. You know that yeah. his poles and others were actually guarded by so many uh, soldiers, isn't it? And they used to do the night duty as well. So, got it, got it, got it. All right, so let's continue. So, the degenerative conditions of the back can also be this problem because, see, this degenerative problem is something which is seen in accordance with age. And of late, what we are seeing today is that the people suffering from this has, the age has actually reduced considerably, like at least 10 to 15 years early, we come across these degenerative changes. If I had to be more clearer, see, those changes what we used to come across at the age of 60 are seen maybe late 40s as well as in the 50s. And this is again a very problematic 
condition because here we are able to do but uh, we have a limitation because degenerative conditions have their own problems then lower uh, bone calcium in younger individuals can lead to wearing out of bones thereby causing back problems occlet have seen that a lot of people coming with this again uh, the osteopenia osteoporosis is one extreme but osteopenia is seen in many of people and uh, they too develop problems uh, especially back ache is one of them infectious conditions of the lower back can lead to back ache so this is again uh, another set of conditions where i am not dealt in detail because uh, this comes under a different like today we are not going to discuss about the infectious conditions but however i should tell you that this tuberculosis it, it's also called as pots disease the infection of the vertebra by tubercular organism can also lead to problems and it can really present as a back ache because on occasions we come across patients approaching us thinking that it's a normal back ache and when it many a times we have to diagnose this way either x ray or imaging other imaging techniques and ultimately to realize that it is a condition which is beyond uh, the normal treatment okay yeah. malignant conditions again this is another common it's not though common but uh, definitely we have to be vigilant about this condition and again in cases where it doesn't respond to normal treatments then extensive investigations are required in order to reveal this next one yeah autoimmune conditions of the back like the rheumatoid arthritis and the ankylosing spondylitis this is also again is uh, seen to be not so uncommon and therefore we need to be vigilant about this as well and we need a set of investigations where it helps us to reach such conclusions though in ayurveda sometimes it may be diagnosed in a different way and may be treated independently but uh, anyway it is important for us to subject the individual to necessary investigations internal organ problems like renal calcoi can also cause back ache because see the back and the abdomen you see the anterior aspect is abdomen and therefore all the abdominal organs what we come across are also likely to produce a kind of pain which may be radiating to the back as well like in case of pancreatitis renal calcoi also may produce like where the calcoi is situated matters in this case and there are other organs also as we know which can in fact uh, cause some pain in the back as well and especially in females we do come across this menstrual problems where in back ache is a very common thing therefore there are many abdominal organs which we have to be aware of which can cause problems now the causes why we discuss about this causes is just because the previous one please uh, the causes why we discuss in detail about this is because uh, see many a times the pro- treatment is conventional treatment that is given without giving much importance to the cause but if that is the case then you may just continue to have a problem as such because the problems cause continues to be there therefore you should be aware of the causes okay thank you next one gastric discomfort and abdominal distension so interestingly it is seen that many a patients present with the back ache but if you try to enquire in detail when you dig out the history then you realize that it's more the gastric problem that has led to this uh, back pain rather than just the muscles of the back or maybe the structure other structures of the back consuming excess tubers like potato sweet potato and seeds and nuts and see these all can in fact lead to various gastric issues which may present as back pain or independently it can also present as back ache then suppressing the natural urge for defecation urination and bladder regularly if you happen to do this regularly then naturally you may come across back ache which may not in fact coincide with any of the causes mentioned above in some cases the cause may remain obscure or unclear in fact see these many are 
causes what we come across commonly. Okay, there are some uncommon causes as well, which we are not going to discuss much today. Okay, common manifestations is a nice set of things that you need to be aware of. Pain in the lower back, which is as said, backache necessarily indicates the same. Then stiffness of the low back. See, you come across many a patients complaining about difficulty in moving the back or getting out of the bed right in the morning. And pain in the back radiating to lower limbs is another issue that uh, many a patients present with. See, lower limb numbness is again one such issue which is troublesome or it is fearsome more than troublesome. Reduced strength in the lower limbs, many times they tell that they have difficulty getting out of the chair or sitting on the floor or if they are able to sit on the floor, they have difficulty getting up from the floor without the help of another individual or maybe by holding some object alone, they will be able to get up from the floor. These all indicate that there is a reduced strength in the lower limbs and it needs a thorough evaluation. Pins and needle sensation in the lower limb. See, there are several other causes as well, apart from your common backache or back problems, which can cause this. Because again, peripheral neuritis may be seen in conditions like diabetes as well. But uh, this is also a possible thing because of your back problems. Next one, please. Well, uh, the symptoms that you have to watch out for, this is another very important thing that you should be bearing in mind as a uh, general ma uh, layman, you have to be aware that there are some alarming symptoms which you have to be vigilant about. Like in case you come across any of these, then you have to approach your doctor at the earliest. Pain accompanied by weight loss. As I mentioned, some of the causes like malignant causes or cancerous conditions of the back, they may not in fact present with any other symptoms except for slight pain along with some weight loss. And that should be a, in fact, alarming sign for you to at least approach the doctor. Then you may in get investigated and realize what is the fact. Well, fever accompanying backache. See, in the normal course, fever is rarely seen with the normal backache. Therefore, if you happen to come across fever accompanying backache, then again, you have to watch out for this. Thinning of the lower limbs. See, whenever the nerve supply is deficient or was, uh, if the uh, blood supply is deficient also, then you would come across this problem. And uh, in this case, again, because of your uh, nervous system, which is supplying the nerves through your back, to the lower limbs as well, through the spine in fact, spinal nerves which supply the back from your lumbar area downwards. Therefore, uh, you have to look out for this symptom as well. You have to be vigilant about it. Then inflammation or swelling on the back. This again, definitely is an important thing. Many a times swelling is ignored as something which may go within a short span of time. But if it persists, definitely you have to take care of it. Persistent back pain where lying down or resting does not help it. See, this shows the magnitude of the problem and therefore you have to take care about it. Next one, please. Pain following a recent injury, blow or trauma to the back. See, this one particular reason is because See, fractures are seen many a times which may be uh, not identified. Therefore, if the pain persists continuously following an injury, then you have to be observant about this fact as well, that it can be because of some bigger underlying problem. Loss of control on in micturation or uh, urination or urinary incontinence, what is called as uh, urinary incontinence is also one of the possible things because the nerves from the spine, from the lumbar area definitely are responsible for the normal micturation. The process is actually involving a lot of nervous impulses. Then difficulty in urinating, that is also again 
possible because of your back pain i mean back may be the reason for it and therefore you, you have to be aware of it now coming to the remedies so well i have not spoken much about the investigation uh, a couple of words about investigation generally the back ache investigations uh, we make use of if at all it is because of the bones or if we suspect that it's because of the vertebra that this problems are occurring generally we insist on in india generally begin with we insist on x ray and then we go for the higher investigations maybe sometimes ct scan or sometimes it's mri like this uh, pet scan also is possible then these investigations are the commonest investigations and the parallelly the blood investigations the routine investigation such as uh, the cbc because if we have to rule out some of the infectious conditions then cbc esr then crp that is c reactive protein all these tests are done then as i mentioned earlier like in some cases if at all we suspect autoimmune conditions then the relevant investigations like for rheumatoid factor or maybe sometimes aslo all these investigations ana all these investigations are done okay so those those are the things about the investigation then apart from that we are mostly concerned with the remedies because ultimately whatever you do if you find a remedy then you forget rest of the things therefore we are looking for sustainable remedies and treatment in ayurveda is generally based on the cause as i mentioned earlier see we identify a host of things as causes apart from what is commonly known through modern medicine therefore we also concentrate on such facts which may be ignored there we adopt both internal and external treatments for management of diseases now we'll discuss about these things in detail in upcoming slides it is important to identify the cause and thereby plan a treatment of management which is customized according to individual patient needs so this is what actually differentiates ayurveda from uh, other systems generally the modern medicine what i talk about uh, this is because see when there is a particular set of treatments which is meant for a disease and you have an individual whose individual needs are different from it we need to be sensitive that is the medicine needs to be sensitive enough to cater to that individual's needs and that is what we do in ayurveda we just try to plan a line of treatment which is individualized or customized for that individual's requirements there are some of the commonest treatments that we make use of only those i am displaying here there are still other treatments which have not been displayed here one of the commonest treatments is kati basti see now kati means the lower back and the basti the term indicates that there is some kind of a bump or a accumulation that we we indicate now in this case what we do is we make use of a dow prepared from mostly black gram or other uh, flours as well and we just try to confine a uh, area and that area would be uh, supplemented with oil in fact this bund holds that oil and it's this oil is relatively warm tolerably warm and this is circulated from time to time and what is the benefit of this say like this is capable of improving the strength of the back muscles uh i must tell you that see it is very surprising that some external treatment of this kind can be very helpful you would be surprised that there are occasions when we uh, come across patients who been suffering from back ache for a long time but with one single uh, set uh, what you can call a sitting not single sitting but a uh, seven day sitting what we have that is one treatment of kati basti they are far better than they came that means to say that this has got a lot of potential next one please well lepa again so this is again a very simple but very effective remedy in some of the cases see the various spasms that we come across in the back 
which may be because of the strain of the muscles or maybe because of the mental uh, stress that one undergoes but these things can be easily overcome by this powerful treatment of lepa here we make use of various medicated uh, oils mixed with powders of medicines herbs in fact and we also make sure that there is a kind of right kind of a uh, base which we have see one of the bases is a very simple base what we make use of is the egg white sometimes we make use of something called as dhanyamla we also make use of some of the decoctions of herbs for uh, preparing this paste chinamuga yeah yeah abhyanga again the sabhyanga is a very simple procedure but very effective procedure by just massaging you may actually see that there is a lot of relaxation and this can again calm down the muscles of your lower back i can vouch for a bhanga i've used it many times uh, you know um, and it, it is very powerful <laughs> thanks uh, amita coming into my defense <laughs> i'm sure that many of you have experienced it because uh, yeah. yes yes and well seeka again see it is a very simple thing see what we see in ayurveda in fact uh, all look very simple but they are really very effective many a times it's been dismissed thinking that uh, these simple procedures how can be a substitute for uh, all the complicated treatments proposed by so many other systems in fact but still i am uh, sure that once you try you would realize that these treatments can be very effective the seka also is a stream of medication or oil so it mostly decoctions in some cases in some cases it may be some fermented uh, liquids that we use depending on the condition and in many occasions it's oil the uh, the medicated oil that we use and manually we do a manipulation following the application of oil and this again is very effective in relieving many spasms it is also very nourishing as well and therefore it uh, helps in improving the strength of the muscles see many a cases of injuries are managed with this trauma because of road traffic accident as i mentioned earlier so there have been very interesting cases uh, maybe possibly on other occasion i'll just discuss about such cases as well next one please well pichu see this pichu is again a procedure which is very simple begin where when we just make use of a cloth especially a cotton cloth that is used and uh, we soak it in the medicated oil which is warmed on a water bath and then we apply this on the affected area sometimes this is tied to that area and on other occasions it may be just that the individual relaxes while it is being placed on that area and from time to time again either the oil is squeezed out and warmed again or we go on applying the oil or changing the pad repeatedly and here again it is very effective in transferring the medicinal properties of the oil to that area and thereby strengthening that area overcoming that muscle spasm so this sweda is again as we all know it's a procedure where in steam is made use of so in ayurveda what we do is uh, we make use of steam generated from or which is actually fumed from various materials now that is the sensitivity of ayurveda i should tell because uh, see depending on the material from which the fuel the steam is generated from its quality also changes and that helps us in overcoming many a problem one of the examples if i were to quote we make use of a particular medicated milk in case of uh, uh, the conditions like facial palsy it's called as kshira duma similarly the same kind of a thing can be used as a nourishing steam and on other occasions we use some fermented liquids from which steam is generated and therein it is a uh, non nourishing one or rather for those who are suffering from conditions like obesity or uh, uh, metabolic syndrome we make use of it like what i was trying to convey is that 
it is not as simple as we see we may have to use it according to the patient's needs and the conditions they suffer from up in this with again this is a very effective method of overcoming the spasms because the pain is very well controlled by use of this patra pindasvera here what we do is we prepare a bag of uh, herbs which are preheated mixed with the necessary herbal powders and uh, we add some what we call as amla dravyas or uh, sour medication because vata as per ayurveda is one of the basic culprit in all the pains and to manage it this patra pindasvera is very helpful and it release spasms very quickly now this is what you see there as you see that it is leaving behind a layer as it is massaged that indicates that there should be something very nourishing yes indeed this is shastika shali pindasvedha what we call this shastika shali pindasvedha is a very nourishing therapy and this is used for cases where there is severe exhaustion where the patient or the individual has suffered from any exhaustive task or continuous strain this kind of a treatment is also employed in aged individuals as well as very small children as well and this can be done in multiple ways by adding necessary materials and one of the very commonest of the things what we make use of apart from what is displayed there the red rice shastika shali what we call as well as and the herbal milk prepared from bala what we call as uh, sida cordifolia a drug and apart from that we also make use of some of the uh, what you call as uh, mamsa rasa or the soups of some uh, animal animals animal meat in fact and uh, even some other varieties of material are also added to that like the marrow of some of the animals can also be very effective in nourishing therapies the main panchakarma treatments so far what i mentioned are on the axillary treatments but this main five treatments what we basically call as penta care for five pan uh, therapies pancha karma pancha means five so then pamana virechana basti nasya as well as rakta mokshana but here in we have not actually mentioned about the rest too because it's not all that relevant in this case but pamana msc therapy as well as virechana purgation and uh, medicated enema these are all useful the first two again are selectively useful as per the individual but this basti treatment treated enema see normal course what you have been uh, observing is the glycerin enema maybe or maybe sometimes soap water enema these are the ones that you have seen commonly but this is very different from that and this one is aimed at bringing about a lot of changes in fact ayurveda recommends this basti as the ardha chikitsa as well as purna chikitsa that means to say that in most of the conditions related to back related to the lower limbs related to the brain related to all the organs of the body various organs of the body we make use of this basti and as you know today most of us are aware that this uh, gut microbiota or the gut bacterial flora has a very large role to play i don't know if you have heard of the brain gut axis or like what how the gut can influence the brain is being researched a lot today see uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago if i were to tell that some treatment of this kind is helpful then scientifically it would be not acceptable to many of them but as of today if you just get into the net and if you try to search for uh, what are the possible things because of the bacterial flora or the microbiological flora that we have in the gut you would find uh, very interesting things there are even some very interesting agencies which can actually give you a very long list of possible things upcoming by giving you a sample of stool 
they can evaluate your microbiological flora of the gut and give you a relatively accurate uh, outcomes now what i was just trying to impress upon you is that see basti or medicated enema is a very effective technique in managing a lot of conditions of the body you're absolutely right and it, i mean now uh, i think there's so many science and research even in ayurveda all the things that you're talking about um there's a lot of research you know right now that's available which was i at least 5 years back also people were not aware of yes thank you <laughs> well yeah indeed so like those who are in tune with this particularly this uh, medical field are really realizing that these things are though they were dismissed as uh, just uh, what you can tell conventional practice but yeah. uh, of late they are finding a lot of uh, logic behind that okay then this basti as i mentioned earlier uh, like if we go on see in fact interestingly we are uh, teachers as well as uh, i mean uh, though we are consultants simultaneously we are teachers as well and uh, we do have a whole big chapter in fact uh, dedicated for this basti treatments in, in fact several chapters being dedicated for this basti treatment and uh, the effectiveness is what we see day in and day out really it makes us feel really sorry for those who are really not able to approach this science in fact see there may be many more interesting things in many other sciences but uh, what i am just trying to tell all the audience out there is that just look into other possibilities and don't go by the, the conventional thinking alone this is what is holding us back from getting cured from your conditions in fact as well as to maintain your health okay having said that there are several other uh, varieties of basti that can prove to be useful and some are very effective in providing strength to the lower limbs as well see this is what we see every day that's why uh, we can maybe uh, affirm that more effectively and as i told earlier definitely we'll come back with more pictures because uh, even as of now we have a couple of patients in our hospital who are actually suffering from one of them who has actually sustained the injury in the neck Uh, at the C5 level, cervical fifth vertebra, and uh, he is actually paralyzed in below neck, and uh, he is slowly improving. He has improved a lot, and there's again infective conditions also which are responding very well. One of the conditions is uh, transverse myelitis. Again, that is also responding very well to the basti treatment. Therefore, this basti treatment is a very effective treatment in managing many a conditions. and there are so many ways of explaining this but uh, let me not just go into greater detail of this uh, the next one please because i am running out of time if i am not wrong i have already yeah. consumed around 40 minutes i think yes now we can wrap up in next 5 minutes next 5 minutes yes, or so that's fine okay. yeah sure, sure. so then medicine in lower back it still very quickly just look at some of the possible things like sallaki uh, i have not written the scientific name but just to make you aware that there are some very interesting medicines it's because uh, possibly the no details have been put in there gugulu then the drugs like rasna nirgundi ashwagandha bala dashamula gokshur and so many other drugs in fact see like there's a very big list of drugs and uh, this is just to show you that there are very effective drugs next one please i want to add that there's a lot of research on ashwagandha in fact ashwagandha is widely used in in us right now by main companies and some of the other uh, you know herbs uh, you can get capsules now yes yes indeed true okay couple of cases that i selected here the patient of 39 year who was working for the automobile industry came with the following complaints so i mild lower back ache with the difficulty in sitting for a long duration for 2 years and the pain in right lower limb with slight radiating pain with slight uh, altered gait for a year or so and then there's a numbness in the lower limbs on sitting for longer periods around 4 months for 4 months that was an additional problem that he was having and uh, difficulty in bending forward stiffness in the back during the morning hours then MRI lumbar MRI in fact revealed that there was a compression at level of L4 L5 as well as L5 S1. So this is a very common problem. This is a commonest or susceptible area of the back in fact, and uh, 
patient had approached multiple systems of medicine to find only symptomatic relief initially but later did not respond to any of the medications see there was a point till when he was able to manage it but beyond that he felt that there was not much of a change that he used to observe because as long as he took the painkillers they were okay but uh, as, long, as soon as he stopped them again that problem recurred patient approached us with the above symptoms and was diagnosed to suffer from cutishula with the asti dhatu involvement asti dhatu means uh, here right is a bone tissue that is involved of the vertebra in fact next one after the diagnosis the patient was treated with thayodashang gulu caplexi say okay these medications are all not, not all that important i think then katibasti was done in this patient as well as patra pindasveda i introduced these two, these two treatments to you earlier next one then the basti chikitsa again this one was very important this is in fact very important in all the cases especially considering the site of pain okay so the niruha as well as anuvasana the coction enema as well as the medicated oil enema were both were in fact administered in this case and though the patient did not respond positively for the first one week see there see this is one more thing that i have to just stress here just don't get disheartened or disappointed that uh, within a short span there has not been a great change see the problem has occurred over the years and you have become so impatient that you can't wait for a week or so see there cannot be see like i just tell my patients most of the times that we are just physicians and we are not magicians that we can make some do some magic definitely you have to wait for some time before there are changes and possibly uh, good faith and uh, good medication can definitely heal you outcome of the treatment there was been a uh, pain which was radiating to the lower limb next one next morning stiffness had actually reduced but the patient is able to sit for longer duration now because earlier what was his complaint is that uh, more than he used to find it difficult to sit in a place for more than 15 minutes or one uh, half an hour beyond that he used to develop that complete numbness in the lower limb but after the treatment now he is able to sit for longer durations though the patient uh, uh, has not completely recovered he has improved a lot and still the treatment goes on okay next one okay this again a 68 year old man presented with this back pain again and lower limb weakness and another interesting thing about this man was that uh, he had developed some kind of uh, muscle wasting or thinning out of the muscles in the gluteal region in fact the next one please okay next one okay the, so then this man had total uh, weakness in the lower limbs as well as uh, had a difficulty in walking or he was not so confident walking therefore there is a altered gait and this led to a very big uh, social stigma for him because every time he attempted to walk there used to be a lot of suggestions for him in the waiting therefore uh, he used to avoid getting into any social gatherings or attending any programs and then he came to us uh, since the case was of a aged individual nourishing treatments were was what was in fact indicated for him and both internally as well as externally and uh, as we have discussed earlier valla and ashwagandha are two very important drugs which are very effective in managing the conditions of the lower back and the lower limbs and here in this case also we had to improve the muscle bulk as well as muscle strength and therefore the treatment went on for the next 3 months next one and uh, both external internal treatments along with sneha dara katibasti and shastika chali pindasveda were done continuously for 15 days and uh, with that he actually improved with the improvement in strength of the muscles also as well as the pain also decreased considerably and his gait improved this in fact helped him improve further because his confidence improved and uh, he started attending all the functions as well as he attended started attending the social gatherings and therefore his even his mind also relaxed and uh, that helped him recover a lot 
anyway that was a case another case but however the treatment did not end there it is still continuing but this <clears throat> the second case that you presented is still continuing right that's what yeah. you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> we are almost on time. If there are any questions, you're welcome to uh, ask right now. Um, I think uh, the way you presented, um, you know, this entire presentation is, is, is was, was excellent. You know, you, you are really, I think Ayurveda is all about understanding the root cause, right? And that's what you emphasized on. Like we, all of us are used to, oh, I have a backache. And then more than likely we'll take pop a pill inside, you know, and then say, oh, backache is done now after one day or two days. And then again, it resurfaces. So <clears throat> all, of, all of us are programmed, right, to not think of, oh, the backache could be something in my abdomen or some of the things that you talked about. Uh, we are all pro programmed into, oh, let me just take a pill and I'll be fine. So Ayurveda has a very different way of thinking, and that is the right way of thinking, of really understanding the root cause and attacking that so that it is for a longer time, right? I mean, that's what I'm, I'm just trying to synthesize this information um, for the users so that they can understand uh, what, what uh, you know, what we are trying to say here. Definitely, I, mean, uh, so I completely endorse this. In fact, even before I joined Ayurveda, maybe I was not so aware about what are the possibilities because, see, we are brought up in this world which is actually dominated by modern medicine. See, I yes. tell you that modern medicine is not necessary, but it's only that uh, we need to make use of it wherever it is necessary, only to the extent that it is necessary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a question. <clears throat> Can a person having pita, kapha, dual dosha have vata disease like knee pain? Indeed, they can have. See, because this pitta, vata, by birth, whatever they may be having, but by yeah. disease, they can have any other doshas. As well as, see, there are other influencing factors, very strong influence of age. See, whether he be a kapha individual or pitta individual, when he gets into the age of vata, like after 60s or 65 years, then definitely very big possibility of uh, vata disorders there. Absolutely. And also, um, uh, you know, it also depends on your lifestyle, right? Like Dr. Sneep is talking about, you know, you're born with something, but uh, the lifestyle is sedentary or something like that, right? Uh, Dr. Sandeep, that makes a huge yes, difference. Indeed, indeed. indeed. It's like uh, the causes can actually trigger any dosha. See, it's only that if you are Vata Pitta dosha dominant, you are yeah. more susceptible to those two conditions, but uh, it doesn't mean the third one is completely ruled out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any other question? I'll follow up on, on the question that you asked, any comment or anything. So, you know, we, we, we can take another one before we uh, wrap it up. Um, so, you have a follow up uh, or a feedback on the question that you asked? You're welcome to do that right now. Okay, I'm just going to wait for a second. It, sometimes people are ty typing and then, you know, it takes a little thing. No, I think the backache is, is a very common, uh, you know, very common, obviously, we all know that. But I think most of us are not aware uh, that uh, backache can be, Ayurveda has a remedy for backache. You know, that is what I think uh, the awareness, where the awareness has to happen. Most of us are going used to, including myself, Abhyanga. And that's where my knowledge stops, you know, beyond that. But I think that's why we are doing these educational webinars and sessions to really educate and become, have people aware of what Ayurveda can do for them. That's wonderful. Like you are again, uh, you do you do Abhyanga regularly. That's a very wonderful thing, in fact, and it should be a example for the rest of them. Because see, definitely, as we age, whatever be our bank balance, but uh, yeah. your health balance, whatever is there, is what counts. Yeah. Yes. Well, with that, we'd like to wrap up this session. We are um, um, at the time. Anyone has any questions? If you are watching it afterwards, you're welcome to uh, email us. You know, I had put our email and uh, website as well. With that, I'd like to wrap up this session. And thank you so much, Dr. Sandeep. It was an excellent session. Uh, the way you presented, I think, it was very easy to understand. So, um, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity that you have provided us and uh, the platform you have provided us. And I hope this platform grows uh, by the day and uh, it reaches many people and really it is uh, going to help a lot of, uh, to bring about a lot of change in the healthcare system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's our intention. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.